Hello learners, in this unit on dance, uh, we shall discuss now the classical dance styles of India. The video uh, shall focus on the distinguishing features of dance styles of India and the linkages of classical dances with tourism promotion. Since ancient times, Indian classical dance was a sacred art practiced and performed mainly in temples. The Indian classical dance is basically a prayer or a puja performed by the dancer adorned with colorful divine dresses and ornaments for the glorification of the divine. It is an eternal art having come from the Lord Shiva and Divine Mother Parvati down to earth to inspire and uplift the sufferings of human beings. The dance was originally meant to please the divine and to be powerful means to bring the dance and the audience back to their final destiny together, that is the experience of divinity. Therefore, the sacred form of dance is also called yoga, since its aim is the union of individual soul with the absolute, that is Paramatma. In this video, the focus of discussion will be on the classical dances of India. I will discuss uh, the evolution of the dance styles, the important features of each classical dance, the costumes associated with dance forms of India. So, let us start the discussion with Bharatnatyam. Bharatnatyam is perhaps the oldest among the contemporary classical dance forms of India. It is derived uh, from the name Bharata and this associated with Natya Shastra. We have lot of literature sculpture and historical evidences available related to Bharatnatyam. This dance form is the cultural heritage of southern India, especially of Tamil Nadu. It is said to have derived the name from Bharat Muni himself. Secondly, Bharata itself means dance and another school of thought propagated by Vedanta Deskar declares that the word Bharata is actually comprises of the syllable bha, ra and ta which respectively stands for bhava that is facial expression, raga musical note and tala rhythm. So, these three certainly form the essential aspects of Bharatnatyam and it is widely popular among all age groups. The Bharatnatyam dancers repertoire is extensive, it is fair well established that the dance can be performed both as a solo dancer or in a group. However, the present form of Bharatnatyam crystallized as a solo dance around 19th century primarily through the remarkable contribution of brothers from Tanjore, Chinmaya, Panya, Vedubili and Shivanandam. In the villages, Bharatnatyam continued as a part of the presentation of the Bhagavad Mela tradition in the villages of Nellore and parts of Tamil Nadu. In certain districts, it was only men who performed the dance, but later on uh, with the efforts of E. Krishna Iyer and other pioneers, uh, we find people from diverse background coming into this dance form and practicing. One of the famous dancers, Rukmani Devi, decided to study Bharatnatyam under the grand old master Minakshi Sundaram Pillai and from Gauri Amma. In 1936, she gave her first performance and this was the beginning of a new era. Finally, there was an emergence of dancers from the families of the traditional areas also. We had the Devadasis who decided to perform in public. Therefore. Uh, Baya Saraswati gave her first public performance outside the traditional area in Varanasi in 1935. The post-independent period was an era of revival and reconstruction institution begun by <coughs> Rukmani Devi. Recitals performed by Bala Saraswati and disciples trained by Minakshari Sundaram Pele such as Shanta Rao all left a deep impact and this condition this tradition continued even today. Now learners, let us discuss uh, the important features of this dance style. The first and foremost is a recital opens with an alapu considered a creation. It is performed in the beginning with perfect repose and an attitude of perfect equilibrium. 
which is known as sabhagam in the standing posture the movements of neck shoulder and arm are introduced with great charm the movements of all major and minor limbs are employed in the simplest form and the basic attitude of these items is submission to the god of dance the next piece called jati swaranam the performer weaves several pet turns on the basic musical composition the basic material pattern or the tal which guide the music also guide the dancers here the dancer introduces for the first time full sequence of different types of avedus or dance tals the piece that follows is called shabdam again a composition of carnatic music here the dancer performs to a song and introduces mimi the miming is deliberately introduced and there are a lot of illustrations regarding the way it has to be presented the end sequence of this short number are pure dance which serves as a bridge between the pure nritya composition like the elipu and the jati swaran on the one hand and the major composition of the varnam on the other after having introduced substantially all elements of dance the dancer proceeds to render the vandanam which is easily the most intricate and complex number the varnam provides the fullest scope to the dancer to improvise on a given theme like the jati swaranam and shabdam this varnam is essentially a musical composition rendered through dance the dancer portrays emotions and expresses ideas through her art form naturally uh, this portrayal carry lot of facial expressions based on tal or rhythm which lies at the very foundation of all dance forms without a complete awareness of a tal a dancer can perform no dance at all for it motivates the artistic presentation lastly inspiration is necessary for the dancers and this comes through a medium of music and which is a integral part of bharatanatyam recital therefore it's a classical dance where you find music in dance in dance in music now let us discuss the lovely costumes that the dancers wear when they practice bharatanatyam the costumes of bharatanatyam dancer is created on the lines of tamil hindu bride a vibrant colorful sari with a pleated stitched cloth in the front that fans out during the leg and knee movement is almost eye catching aspect of the attire in fact the sari is not a single piece but a combination of many cloth pieces of different varieties the sari is wrapped in a special way where it tightly covers the back and crosses over one shoulder with the palla on the end of the sari is held at the waist by the belt the belt is jeweled accessory and is complemented with jewelry on nose ears neck and sometimes head the hair is tied usually in a tight bun or a knot adorned with flowers or the gajra the ghungru speed away to the move as the eyes are lined for highlight the hand and feet are also painted with red kumkum powder for better viewing of the gestures and movements by the audience the male costume consists of a dhoti which is usually stitched with rich silk and embroidery and the upper body is generally bare so learners after understanding the basic features of the dance form of bharatanatyam now let us move to another popular classical dance which is known as kathak kathak is a popular dance form of northern india it is also called as natwari dance the genesis of this dance is commonly traced from the word kathak figuring in ancient sanskrit literature it indicated the existence of a community of storytellers through enacting the various parts of the story the jain religious literature also mentions a specific category of people the entertainers through the word kahang In its present form Kathak was developed and given patronage in the court of Nawab of Awadh. We find noticeable deviations from the original structure of Kathak during its growth in Awadh as a part of the royal patronage. Musical forms such as tappa and thumri now provide the rhythmic base for the dance. We have instruments that 
are heavily used in Kathak performance and these are Tabla and Pakhavaj. After understanding the background of the Kathak dance, now let us understand its important features. The dance is composed of three basic parts. The dance first, the movement which is cut and the enactment or the abhine. The dance is only rhythmic play of the different parts of body. Movement gut is the de description of primarily the Krishna Leela through facial expressions in consonance with different postures of hand and arm. The feet responds to the musical rhythm by thumping the ground. Enactment or abhine is the climax. Here the dancer sings through different dance postures and focus on the enactment of the story. Kathak has been promoted through three major gharanas, the Lucknow, Jaipur and Banaras. In fact, the Jaipur and Banaras gharanas owe their original to the Lucknow gharana. The king of Kathak, Lachu Maharaj and Shambhu Maharaj belong to Lucknow. This gharana was fine founded by their grandfather Maharaj Thakur Prasad who was a courtier and the dance teacher of Nawab Wajid Ali Shah. His two sons Maharaja Kalka Prasad and Bidhanan did yeoman service to the cause of Kathak. Some of the important artists have been Mirju Maharaj, Gopi Krishna, Sitara Devi, Damyanti Joshi and you can find their performances even today on various websites. Now let us move to the costumes of Kathak. Kathak hails from three distinct regions as discussed Jaipur, Lucknow and Banaras. It is also a dance form that cut across religions and practiced by number of Hindus and Muslims with the variations in dress. The Hindu Kathak dancer wears either a sari or a long full skirt that reaches the ankle. The sari is wrapped around the waist and its end hangs down from the left side. A blouse covers the upper body and a tikka usually adorns the forehead along with the customary jewellery in ear, nose and neck. The dancer may also wear some kind of a orni in some cases. The full long skirt on the other hand is embroidered on the base and is for light weight. The skirt that trills with grace during dance movement. The upper body is covered in a blouse or a choli that is in contrast color to the skirt and a transparent scarf usually covers the head. The Muslim costumes also include a long skirt but a close fitting chudidar is worn on the legs. Sometimes an overcoat is also worn to cover the hands along with the head, orni or scarf. For male dancers, a skill dhoti around the waist is covered with a skill scarf tied on the top. The upper tosco is either bare to show the Hindu thread or can be covered in a loose jacket. So learners, in this video so far, we have discussed the two most important classical dance forms of India, one Bharatnatyam and second Kathak. Now let us discuss an, another interesting uh, dance form which again belongs to South India that is Kathakali. Within the first two decades of the emergence of Ramanatham as a distinct form of theatre, it became clear to the performing artist that actor could not do justice to music, dance and action at the same time. Dance affected one's breath and music demanded a steady breath. So, it was between 1630 AD and 1640 AD that Raja of Vetu to Nadu, a great lover of art came into the scene to develop this art form. So, we had royal patronage for this dance. The, the royal kings were great scholars and they helped in the development of the new form of Kathakali. They introduced and encouraged reforms. The most important of which was to provide a musician to sing the entire dialogue so that the actor could be fully free to interpret it with gestures and movements. Kathakali is a dance form from the southernmost state of India. Its center has been the region of Kerala and Malabar. The genesis of the word Kathakali is generally traced to the combination of Katha and Kale which literally means a dance drama. 
This tradition of grand stama has been popular in the Malabar region primarily in the form of Krishna and Rama ballads. The same folk art was again redeveloped in the 17th century AD by the ruler of Travancore state, Maharaja Veer Karnal Verma as Kathakali. The lyrics used in this dance seems to be influenced largely by Jaydev's Gita Govind. So after understanding the background of Kathakali, now let us understand the features of this dance style. This dance form in the earlier stages was an exclusive domain of male dancers. Even female roles in the storylines are performed by perfection by male artists. In support of the performance of the dance, a group of singers keep continuously reciting the poems and epics. The artists who perform Kathakali do not sing the lines themselves. The, all the actions are executed in silence by the artist only through poses and postures of body and face. However, the dance postures are at times more complex than those used in other classical dances. Therefore, in the Kathakali dance form, the actor should concentrate on the specialization in abhine that is aesthetic expression leading to the present state of styled perfection. There were changes in the system of costumes and makeup. The earlier masks were used by demons, but now instead of that, the new practice emerged where faces were painted with appropriate color. It was Raja Shekhar Nair who combined the two most components of Kathakali performance with reference to the dance styles as well as the makeup. Now in this dance form, Vachika component of Abhine is provided by two musicians who sing the shlokas and the padas from behind the actors. The shlokas constitute the narrative posture which may also include introduction of the characters appearing in the scene. The events that have taken place in between the scene and the padas constitute the dialogue. They are all set to specific tal. The style of singing is known as sopana derived from the patterns adopted for singing hymns at the temple premises. Angika Abhine is another part of this form which has its own important role. As the dance performers do not use the spoken words, they need an effective gesture and language to converse among themselves. So Kathakali has evolved its own elaborate language of gestures. The basic component of this language are the mudra, which can be hast mudras or hand gestures. The language of Kathakali has been drawn freely from Bharata's text but is also enriched to express all the human emotions. The gestures can be further classified as imitative, for example, to show an elephant, a lion, a deer, a snake, or it could be descriptive to show things like fire, river, mountain, city, or houses. So we express different moods like anger, impatient, love, hatred, and are also related with symbolic gestures associated with heaven and hell. Another part of Kathakali is Sattvika Abhine. It is a perfection of Sattvika Abhine which is attained in Kathakali that has made it as a total classical dance form. Sattvika Abhine is also known as Rasa Abhine. Rasa is the aesthetic flavor or sentiment. In a drama, all the various aspects of Abhine culminate around the rasa or the, the, the flavor. The stage of Kathakali is, is very simple. We need only equipments uh, and we have a huge coconut oil fed lamp towards which all movements converge. Uh, the curtains are of rectangular nature and the drums are based on the local tradition. The dance is performed all through the night on the stage which is simple but specifically designed for this dance form. We have a brass lalteen also which invariably hangs on the stage. So we have 
the ritual of playing drums at the beginning of the dance and the stage has number of simple objects which are basically based on the various articles that we find in the temple. After understanding the basic form of uh, Kathakali, let us now focus on the costumes of this dance form. One of the peculiarities of this dance form is the costume with very elaborate makeup of the face. In this respect, Kathakali has presented and also kept alive and continued the ancient dance dramas of Kerala. The face is mostly painted with red and yellow and the eyelashes are adorned with lines of white all around. The head dress in Kathakali is of special significance that it also defines the hierarchical status of different artists for participating in the performance. Finding its root in the art form of Kerala, Kathakali has one of the most elaborate costumes. It takes few hours for the dancing groups to get ready before the performance. The colorful costumes, highlighted makeup and facial paintings made by Kathakali theater artist is popular among all age groups. The makeup is coded as color representing the type of character that the dancer is portraying. For example, the green punts are face paints along with red lips are depictions of God, nobles and sages such as Krishna, Shiva, Rama. Red is used for those depicting evil such as Ravana. Black is a color for hunters and forest dwellers. Sometimes stamens are also painted with black color. Yellow is for monks and noble men and women such as Sita or Panjali. White beer represents the one with a devotional character such as Hanuman. The makeup and the colors represent the virtues of the character and the dance form combines the colors to give deeper meaning and understanding of the character. So now there are a number of dance academies that have come up and Kathakali theater is also well established in different parts of the country which impart training throughout the dancers at the global level. We have various institutions uh, which were formed under the leadership of late Guru Chain Ganul Raman Pillai and um, late Shankaran Amudri and Gopinath have been Kathakali artists of repute. So we have various dancers of Kerala who are doing a lot of work and making the dance form suitable as per the requirements of the changing time. We have a Kerala Kala Mandap which is set up and who is doing a commendable work in the promotion of Kathakali dance. So learners, uh, let me move to the last part of the classical dance which is the Odyssey. Based on the archaeological evidence, Odyssey is considered to be the oldest form of classical folk dancing in India. It finds its origin at the Hindu temples of Orissa on the eastern seaboard of India. The theoretical background of Odyssey dance is well documented in ancient Sanskrit literature with its steps, forms and unique hand gestures are found inscribed on the sculptures and morals of Odyssey Hindu temples and shrines. Odyssey is based on mythological stories, devotional poems and spiritual messages from Hindu text. Dancers again rely on abhine, expression and mudra gestures to convey the meaning. In the state of Orissa, this dance performance is done by a handful of people who may belong to different religious groups. So learners, uh, we have understood that India is rich in number of classical dance forms. These classical dance forms have immense educational and regional value. Dance was basically focused on sadhana in the earlier stage which was a way to achieve God experience. Today dance academies train the artist on art, musical as well as they focus on the ethical aspects associated with dancing forms. There are a number of tourism events which are organized and dance festivals are promoted by Government of India 
so that the tourists are able to get inspiration and they enjoy the Indian classical dance structure. This dance forms need to be promoted through number of international festivals and we have the government initiatives where these dance forms are promoted through various websites, social media sites and events are organized to promote the emerging young dancers of India. Thank you.